Hypertension, also known as high blood pressure, is a measure of the pressure within the vascular system in the body at a particular time. When the heart is contracting, that's the point that creates the highest pressure within that arterial system, and that creates the systolic number, or the top number in the blood pressure. That normal number is less than 120. When the heart is relaxing, that creates the lowest amount of pressure in that system and that number should be less than 80. When the heart contracts, if your blood pressure is going up to 220, then that's really high. That suggests that there's a high pressure within that system and that puts stress and strain on the arteries. Through those delicate little arteries, you've got what's equivalent of a fire hydrant jamming that blood through and a blood vessel can burst. But even if it doesn't, the artery walls can be damaged by that overly high blood pressure. And in the body's attempt to heal that injury, it's kind of like putting a Band-Aid on there. Different collagen matrix and cells come together to kind of heal that injury. Think about it like piling one Band-Aid on top of another. They get bigger and bigger and bigger, and they can burst. And when they do, it triggers the formation of a clot that is like a cork in the artery, stopping all blood flow. But it's more than just the plaque or the clogging of the arteries. That's more of a dynamic system than simply rust in the pipe. Uh, the arteries are not like lead pipes. They're flexible. They're lined with what's called smooth muscle that can constrict or dilate. And so during times of emotional stress, for example, the arteries constrict. And that's part of what's called the fight or flight response. It's actually evolved to protect us so that if you're walking along in the jungle and the mythical saber-toothed tiger jumps out in front of you, you want your arteries to constrict. You want your blood pressure to go up. You want your eyes to dilate because these are things that can help you survive. So either you run faster away from the tiger or you fight the tiger or the tiger eats you. But one way or another, it's over fairly quickly. And if the tiger bites you, you want the arteries to constrict. You want the blood to clot faster because that can keep you from bleeding. And we've really evolved to deal with these short-term stresses, these acute stresses, the tiger jumping out in front of you. But in modern times, the stresses are so much more chronic that these mechanisms that really have evolved to protect us can harm us or even kill us because they're chronically turned on. And so by managing stress more effectively, using simple stress management techniques, stretching, breathing, meditation, these are all things that can, in effect, make your fuse longer so things don't bother you as much. You can be out in the world because the stress isn't just what you do. More important is how you react to what you do. And likewise, a, a diet that's high in animal protein and fat and cholesterol makes your blood clot faster. Let's say I eat the foods that I grew up with as a kid in Fargo, North Dakota. The meaty, dairy-heavy diet increases my blood viscosity. Fatty foods make your blood too thick. That makes your blood pressure go up. While it may take decades for those blockages to build up, we've shown in the heart that you can actually reverse them. And instead of the arteries getting more and more clogged over time, they get less and less clogged. But the other mechanisms also improve. The arteries become more smooth. The arteries dilate so blood flow can go through more easily. Getting your cholesterol down, getting your blood pressure down, especially throwing away the cigarettes, getting your weight down with healthy eating habits, that has a huge impact on whether you would ever have a stroke. It, it can dramatically reduce the risk.